topic about react that is the redux so we will discuss that why do we need and when do we need redux and how do we implement the redux in our uh, react native applications so uh, the concept of redux is uh, common for the react and it is a third party library and very well maintained so uh, it's uh, it is quite optimized and uh, uh, a dedicated team is working on the uh, Redux and uh, uh, it is not officially by native or the React or the by the Facebook but uh, that is the third party library and many other uh, libraries are also using Redux. Uh, so uh, we will first discuss about uh, the basics about the Redux that I have just uh, explained that it is officially maintained, which means that uh, you have the latest updates and uh, it is properly tested and uh, there are not much vulnerabilities in that. And similarly, uh, it is designed to work with the React component model. So uh, it is used when we have the complexity in our application or we have the large applications and we want to maintain the state. So I will discuss different scenarios where uh, we have to or we can achieve things through the Redux. And these are some of the, uh, you can say that, uh, you can say the marketing point of uh, this Redux that uh, and also we have the other libraries with the Redux that is the Redux toolkit with the help of toolkit we can uh, even uh, easily uh, debug the Redux states and so on. So the question is that why do you need Redux and when do you need a Redux? So actually the problem is one thing is that Redux is the uh, useful in uh, scenarios where you have large amount of application state. So you have a large amount of application state that are needed in many places in the application. Which means that if you change a state in one component because it's, you know that the state is the component level. Uh, and if you want to uh, affect the other components uh, by the changing of the state, you somehow need to notify those components. So when you need to notify those components, uh, right now the knowledge that you have, current knowledge, with the current knowledge, you can use the async storage. So you store something in the storage and then you read that storage from the other component and then you see that uh, what's going on in the application. But you cannot, or if you want to share the state one thing that we have used, if you remember these login and sign up screens that we designed in that I was sending the uh, state function. I was sending the function reference that was changed from the other uh, component when I click on the login. So I actually modify the state of the parent component uh, that I can send the state, but that is that is fine with two or three components. But when you have large application and you have so many components and there is no proper hierarchy between the components and you want to share the state and you want to take effect on the UI with some user actions. So at this point, Redux actually kicks in. So uh, and similarly, when uh, app state is updated frequently and uh, you want to like see the changes instantly, uh, so you can say that Redux, if I if I like uh, say in one one sentence, what is the Redux is? So Redux is something that is a kind of a global state. So you decide that which component needs that specific global state, so that if somebody changes something in the global state, my component instantly updates. So that is that is all about the Redux. That is the simplest uh, example. One of the scenario is dark theme, which is a very common in the applications nowadays. So if you see this uh, animation on the right, 
I, I have provided the reference of this uh, application and the walkthrough. Uh, so when you somehow in the settings, when you go into the settings and you enable the switch to the dark theme and instantly the, the theme of this application is changed, which means that every component needs to know that theme has been changed of this application. So which means that you every component should change the theme according to the user's preference immediately rather than you change the theme you store that theme uh, information into the async storage you somehow reload the application or every component go and read the storage that is not a uh, workable scenario because uh, you need instant change in the ui on the actions of a user all right so this is one of the scenario a very common scenario where you change the theme of your uh, application and you want to change uh, and uh, want to show the effects immediately after user changes the theme one another scenario uh, because we were talking about that when we have the complex application and we have uh, uh, lots of components and we don't know that how or the or the placement of those components and there is a possibility that during the development you change the placement of those components so if you somehow maintain the hierarchy and you pass the states uh, to the children of uh, uh, of the component hierarchy in the component hierarchy uh, there is a possibility that you change somehow that hierarchy and when you change that, that hierarchy you also need to change the pattern of passing the states in the component all right so in that uh, case you need to have somehow a global state where you can see what's going on in the application and you can check you can actually make the decision this is a possibility that uh, in the in the users component or the you uh, you can say the in the users uh, hierarchy of the screens you have the login and you have the sign up so when you to somehow sign in into your application and you want to know that what's going on over here in my application so i will open the the pointer so if you want to uh, make something make the scene some some decision some state changes over here and that change you want to receive that change over here somehow or uh, if you want to perform some operation over here maybe you are adding something uh, into the card and you also instantly want to change the quantity over here in the product list and you instantly want to update the dashboard of the user uh, for this if you use the states traditionally that we are using that is the part of the uh, components that would be really hard to pass that uh, state to the other components for this you use a global state that is the redux store we call it a store and we store the information over there and you notify that this has been changed and you use that store or the triggers that actually notifies to the global state of the application uh, you somehow uh, subscribe to that and you use that global state and you read that state and you uh, further develop the business logic of your component accordingly all right so i think uh, the thing is clear at this point that why and when we need redux in our application so these are the few scenarios that are actually helpful all right uh, should I move on? Is it clear that why and when do we need a Redux? Yes, sir. All right. So now, uh, Redux, why we are afraid of Redux? Because Redux is a, a bit complex to understand. So I will try to simplify the understanding of the Redux. So one thing is that we know that that is a central store where we uh, we store the states which is the global sto state and that's that store would be used to read that global state such as uh, such as dark theme 
So if you want to change the theme, that theme information should be stored in the central store. And all those components that need to read that specific uh, or the or the current theme, uh, they need to actually uh, read that uh, store. It is not necessary that all components read that store, uh, but all those components that require the the common uh, state and they need to read that common state, they actually read that store. Otherwise, it's not necessary that all components going to read that. So we have a component. Let's assume that we have a component to change the theme. And as soon as you change the theme, you know that normally we use a, a React hook uh, in functional components or the state object in the class based component. So I guess most of you are working in the functional component, so I will talk about the hook. So we use React hook to change the state so that we instantly change the uh, uh, change the theme of this application. But that would affect only this component. I need to notify all or I need to notify the central store so that all those components who actually need that uh, theme information, they can actually read from the central store. So what happens is that when a component, when something triggers through the user action, uh, definitely you specify the what kind of action I'm going to perform and you actually dispatch that action. So you actually somehow trigger the uh, central store and you need to you actually define the reducer. So reducer is something that, re that, that actually receives uh, action that is performed by a component. So reducer actually receives that and reducer actually changes the store or updates the store. Or you can say it updates, reducer updates the uh, the global state. All right. And all the business logic based on the information that is provided to the component, all the business logic is provided in the reducer. So reducer, reducer is something that is used to write your business logic and based on that you update the state and uh, after that all those components who actually need that state they actually uh, uh, read that state and state updates and as you know that when state updates of a component components uh, uh, reloads and uh, it's updated instantly so when you need that kind of effect you can use that. All right. And uh, this is the cycle of your uh, uh, Redux. So, so you need to have a component that actually triggers, which means that dispatches an action that goes to the reducer, reducer update is sent to the store, and all those components which need that information, they, they actually look for the central store, and it actually has a special hook that will update the component and then uh, things change. So this is actually the kind of a cycle of uh, Redux and that's how it. So it has like two, three or three, four things that we need to know that is the reducer. We need to have a dispatcher. We have a central store. And uh, these are the uh, three, four things that is required so that our uh, uh, Redux can work. All right. These are few of the examples that are uh, provided through the official documentation. Uh, this is the example that I have created. I'm going to demonstrate that. And this is the uh, online uh, kind of uh, walkthrough how we can implement the dark theme with the help of Redux. So I will go to the example that I have created a simple example and mostly that example is available uh, in uh, official documentation that is a basic counter example. So first let me explain that how this will work rather than going directly into the code. The thing is that this counter is normally uh, at a state at a, at a component level. So this is uh, let's assume that's why I said that this is a component slash screen. 
So let's assume because instead of creating multiple screens, I just created the components because ultimately screens are the components, right? So instead of uh, uh, creating multiple screens, I did put all those components. These are the three components on uh, that one uh, screen. So this is the component one. So what I want to do is that if I want to perform some operation from here, I want to instantly update all the components who are interested in the counter value. All right. And similarly, uh, because this is this counter is maintained through the Redux. So if I change to this component or from this component, this is the global state that is going to change. And uh, whenever I press the increment or decrement, this will change. And this is my innocent kind of a simple uh, component which actually just interested in the reading the value. So just assume that if I change the theme from uh, these buttons from the dark and the light theme, what I need to do is that I just need to read what's going on. So as soon as uh, the global store is updated or the state is updated, I am notified and I will update it automatically. So the rest of the business logic of the components and the application would be the same as we are uh, working in uh, our traditional um, uh, React Native uh, application development. All right. So these are the three components. So if I change, you see that it's instantly changed in uh, other components. And I don't need to worry about that how I pass the, the states and I actually don't need to pass the state uh, and the, the variable of the state to other components. And uh, if I show you the business main main app, this is my main app that has three components D1, D2 and D3. And uh, you see that I'm not passing anything to those components. So which means that those components are directly reading the uh, the state of the counter with the help of use selector. So let's start from the beginning and see that uh, what's going on in this application and how this Redux uh, is implemented in this application. So uh, you need to definitely need to import Redux. You also need to import React Redux that is available in the official documentation. You see the package.json. We have the Redux and the React Redux. All right. So. <clears throat> We need to import the create store. We need to use the provider so that we specify that in that specific hierarchy of the components. I need to provide the store. There is a possibility that if my application is quite big, uh, maybe I'm maintaining separate stores uh, for the global states. There is a possibility and there is also a possibility that I need to use specific store in a specific set of components or the hierarchy of the component. And you also need to use the hook that is a special hook provided with the uh, React uh, Redux or the Redux and uh, with the help of a use selector that is a hook that access the Redux store state. So just like um, use state we use use selector. So as soon as something is updated uh, through the Redux, use selector will help us to read that state and instantly update the UI. So just like uh, normally what we used to do is uh, we used to write uh, something like this, get counter, set counter and react dot use state, right? So normally we do something like this. So instead, and that is the hook. So as soon as uh, uh, as soon as it updates the states, uh, th that is reflected on the UI. But in this case, we are using because we, with the help of Redux, we can use the use selector, and use selector can be used to uh, display the information and further perform other business logic if you want to do that. So let's get back to the. Uh, point what do we need is as I discussed earlier that we need uh, to create a store. We need a reducer and uh, we need a dispatcher. 
All right. So uh, we can create a reducer. Reducer is actually is something that is uh, that is a function and function that takes a current state value, and uh, that is something that where you write the business logic. You can specify the action and the state. So initially, it has a state uh, zero. As soon as the component launches, it has a default state. And uh, all the state changes goes to the reducer, and reducer will update that. And you can implement the business logic over here. In this case, uh, switch is used, but it's not necessary to use that. So action is provided at what kind of uh, action user has performed through the dispatcher. So uh, this is the action that is supplied. And based on that action, you uh, you decide that what do you want to do. With the state, so as soon as you do some changes, perform some changes uh, to the state, that is somehow uh, with the help of dispatcher definitely, and that is somehow announced and uh, with the help of use select, uh, that is uh, uh, updated on the inside the components, and then the components changes the UI or updates the UI. So you need to have the Reducer, and you also need to have the store. All right. So you need to create the store. After the creating the store, I have I have named it as my store. So that is a store, and uh, you can subscribe, you can dispatch, and with the help of get state, uh, you can get the state current state of the store. And the most important. Uh, 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 action that is uh, provided by this uh, store is dispatch function. So because with the help of dispatch, you specify that uh, uh, how do I want to do and what do I want to do something with this state. All right. So and when you create the store, you specify that this store would be would be using that specific reducer. All right. So when you create the store. You specify the uh, reducer, and if I get back to uh, okay, if you get back to this uh, flow, so you have a component that triggers something dispatches. I will discuss about the dispatch. I have not discussed that. Discuss that. So we have the reducer, and we when you create a store, we specify that this is the reducer that would be used in that store. All right, so that when you update to the reducer that updates the store that is the central store central storage that is the memory level we are not storing anything in the async store or the persistent storage all right and this is just uh, uh, it's like counter uh, kind of a variable that is returning the state value so this is something that is a global and uh, these are not part of any component and that would be at the global level at your application because that must be used or should be accessible uh, throughout uh, your application. In that scenario, uh, they are global to uh, to your entire mobile application level. All right. We also need to have the provider, and in the provider, uh, we specify the store name that. As I mentioned earlier, that there is a possibility that in the hierarchy you want to use different stores, and in one application, in a large application, there is a possibility that you use multiple stores, not one store. All right. So, if you want to, uh, if you want all the components to use that store, you can pass that store in the provider so that we can. Take the benefit of use selector, and uh, this Redux is uh, implemented in uh, in in this entire uh, hierarchy of the uh, components. So there is a possibility that this component further has uh, its own navigation, and uh, all those navigated and the all those screens also need that specific store. So you specify the provider. So this is another thing that we need to use the provider, and this is something that I have already discussed. That all those components who are or which are interested uh, in the reducer, they can actually use that. Such as in the last component, this one, 
uh, it actually interested to read the uh, react uh, redux store and uh, want to know the counter value with the help of select counter so this is a select counter that actually returns the value of the state so state object actually has the value uh, and the this is the key and this is the value of the key all right so how do we dispatch the uh, the action definitely uh, most of the time that would be a user action and you specify the store which store is used to dispatch so i as i discussed earlier so this store actually has the subscribe dispatch and get state all right so you dispatch uh, and with the help of dispatch action you from the component where you want to trigger uh, or update the global uh, redex store you dispatch something from here and you specify the action so if you get back to the example so you dispatch the action in this case that is the object that we are passing and having the type so if i get back to the reducer so in the reducer we have the state that which is the first argument because uh, reducer has the action and the state all right and this is the action that has the type and i specify that which type i want to pass or which actions i want to perform that is the business logic that i can use in this case switch is used but it's not necessary to use the switch but uh, the thing is that in the reducer i want to know that what kind of action is dispatched because there is a possibility that in a reducer there are uh, multiple uh, uh, multiple actions such as uh, in in the case of theme we have the dark theme and we have the light theme so in the action you specify that which theme i want to use or i want to update my store with uh, either the light theme or the dark theme all right in this case we are passing the action that is the counter increment counter slash increment this can be only increment as well so the pattern that is used is that the counter slash increment and exactly same action is passed from here counter slash increment counter slash decrement so this is my uh, component one which is this one this screen one i'm calling it screen so if i press the increment it dispatches and it increment the counter so if i add a plus sign it dispatches uh, an action and uh, it goes to the reducer and it's it identifies the action that is the increment and it returns the object so there is also one important note that is written over here in the comments that is it's important that you should not mutate the state object but return a new object if the state changes all right so that's why it's returning uh, a new object containing the value reading the current state value and incrementing the value and uh, as soon as it returns uh, with the help of you select that is using the that is reading the state value and uh, with the help of hook because that is a hook and uh, as soon as something changes in the state uh, that is uh, the global state maintained through the redux it will notify the component whichever component is using the selector and it will update the state similarly because that is the redux and the global store so this is the component number two which is this one so it also perform the dispatch function and with the help of dispatch function it increment the counter and the decrement the counter and the same uh, action is performed as in this one which is the component number 1 so if i decrement the counter it will update the store and 
it will work like this. So with the help of that, we can pass and use the store and perform uh, use the redex and perform these kind of uh, global operation with the help of store. So that's how component dispatches the action. It reaches the reducer and uh, central store actually has information of the reducer because when we created the store, we specified that we are going to use that reducer for that specific store. And with the help of use selector, all the because we have subscribed to the uh, store with the help of use select use selector. And uh, with the help of use select, that is the hook provided by the Redux. So use selector will actually uh, update the uh, state and the component would be updated. So this is how we can so you specify would dispatch the action with the help of uh, we dispatch the action with the help of uh, a dispatcher and uh, that is the cycle. So these are three four things which are the basics of uh, uh, Redux and there are definitely some more complex things in the Redux but it's just about to give you an overview and the idea of that when do we need to use Redux and in which scenarios uh, uh, how do we know so, the, so there are also some more things that are mentioned in the official uh, documentation that is it's not necessary to use Redux every time uh, there are some simple things that uh, can be performed without Redux and uh, we need to use Redux wisely and uh, but most of the application actually require that whenever we need to change the state and we want to take effect or uh, have the effect of that change instantly uh, for the rest of my application. So in that case, I would I would need uh, Redux code. All right, so 